Today we are in Crown Hill Cemetery in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I have told you all that I do have several videos from here coming, and this place is full of history. The first visit from that trip, no exception. Today we are going to be visiting famed crime boss and at one time public enemy number one, John Dillinger. Born June 22, 1903, John Dillinger seemed to find himself in trouble from an early age. During his younger years, Dillinger found himself in trouble often, normally for petty theft and fighting. He was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. He quit school to work in a machine shop. His father, who reportedly was a stern disciplinarian, moved his family to Mooresville, Indiana, fearing that the big city was corrupting his son. Uh, this move had no effect on young John Dillinger, who was arrested for auto theft in 1922. Dillinger eventually joined the Navy mostly because of his troubles, and to no surprise, he was dishonorably discharged within months. Dillinger returned to Mooresville and got married to Beryl Ethel Hovius in 1924. He was attempting to settle down and hold a steady job, but that didn't pan out. It was at this time that he planned his first robbery, stealing $50 from a local grocery store. Dillinger was arrested and eventually sentenced to 10 to 20 years for the incident. He was incarcerated at both the Indiana Reformatory and Indiana State Prison from 1924 to 1933. It was here and during this time that Dillinger became wrapped up in a criminal lifestyle. During this time, he was befriended by high-profile criminals which included very experienced bank robbers. A perfect storm of bad circumstances, the men would plan heists and robberies that they would carry out when they were released. Dillinger's father campaigned for his early release and after serving nine and a half years, he was paroled. He was released during the midst of the Great Depression and immediately embarked on a crime spree that is still talked about to this day. His first bank robbery occurred on June 21, 1933, where he stole $10,000 from the new Carlisle Bank in Ohio. Less than two months later, he robbed another bank in Bluffton, Ohio. He was tracked to Dayton, where he was once again arrested and taken into custody. Dillinger had previously conceived an elaborate escape plan in a case such as this. Dillinger had his friends smuggle firearms into the prison, which they used to escape. He was incarcerated for a grand total of four days. The group of men that helped perform the escape heist became part of the group known as the First Dillinger Gang. They impersonated officers and advised that they had come to extradite Dillinger back to Indiana. An officer lost his life in the heist and they fled to Indiana where they joined the rest of the gang. The Dillinger Gang then embarked upon a flurry of bank robberies. John Dillinger is known to have participated in 12 different bank robberies between June 1st, 1933 and June 30th, 1934. Dillinger and his gang didn't just stay in Indiana. They were actually captured on January 25th, 1934 in Tucson, Arizona. Dillinger was once again captured and extradited back to Indiana. He was held in charge for taking the life of an officer in East Chicago, Indiana. The local police force exclaimed that they had an escape-proof jail and even posted extra guards to prove it. On March 3rd, 1934, Dillinger escaped using a fake carved pistol. And you know, when I started pulling back the curtain a little bit and looking into the life a little more of John Dillinger, I mean, he was involved in so many heists, bank robberies, and just general crime. It's really, it's truly unbelievable. And you know, it appears that he definitely earned that moniker of public enemy number one. Dillinger was indicted by a grand jury which kicked off a nationwide manhunt by the Bureau of Investigation. Dillinger was officially on the run, meeting up with John Red Hamilton with whom he immediately formed a new gang. The new gang they formed consisted of themselves and the gang of Babyface Nelson. Three days after his escape, 
This gang robbed a bank in South Dakota and another a week later in Iowa. Dillinger found himself right in the middle of more crime, including a shootout at the Lincoln Court Apartments in which Dillinger received a wound. The whole situation at the Lincoln Court Apartments was an arrest attempt on Dillinger as a result of a tip made to the FBI. Dillinger returned to Mooresville with his girlfriend, Billy, to visit his family. The FBI was watching. They were eventually followed and Billy was arrested. She refused to give Dillinger's whereabouts, but he was waiting in a car outside of the tavern where Billy was arrested. They never saw each other again. By July 1934, Dillinger had seemingly disappeared. He made his way to Chicago and lived under an alias. Dillinger went as far to have plastic surgery in order to change his appearance to avoid his criminal past and evade capture. The drive to capture John Dillinger prompted Divisions of Investigations Chief J. Edgar Hoover to create a special task force in Chicago. On July 21st, a madam from Gary, Indiana contacted the FBI. A Romanian, she offered the FBI information on Dillinger in exchange for their help in preventing her deportation. She informed them that he was spending time with another madam and that the two planned to go to a movie theater the next day. Federal agents and Chicago officers formed a force aimed to carry out Dillinger's arrest. The Biograph Theater was showing the movie Manhattan Melodrama, starring Clark Gable and Myrna Loy. At approximately 8.30, Dillinger was seen entering the building. A stakeout began and the plan to take out Dillinger was in full effect. When the movie ended, a series of signals were made as Dillinger left the theater, informing the agents and officers that he was exiting. Ignoring commands to surrender, Dillinger fled to an alley and three officers followed. Officers began firing and Dillinger was struck four times. At approximately 10.40 p.m. on July 22, 1934, Dillinger died as a result of wounds sustained when agents fired upon him. Dillinger died without saying a word. For a day and a half, Dillinger's body was on display at the Cook County Morgue. An estimated 15,000 people viewed the body. And his body now rests here at Crown Hill Cemetery in Indianapolis, Indiana.